Uh, there's already 24 of you. Awesome. And um, so uh, while we wait for everybody to get in here, we've got uh, Mike, Mark Iron on the call today. I've talked about him before, and I know a few of you had asked about uh, when I was actually going to have him on the call. So that's today. And we can definitely have him back in the future. Um, Mark is uh, um, uh, basically an expert on, I, I don't know how to describe it, but basically the human biology, you know, as far as fitness, health, energy, testosterone, getting it, uh, get you getting your testosterone jacked up naturally, uh, getting your DHT jacked up so you can develop more masculine features like a broad jawline, uh, uh, develop more muscle faster. Um, getting, uh, if you got like, uh, if you got energy problems and let's say you got histamine responses and things like that going on, he helps you figure all that stuff out. And he's been instrumental in helping me to make a lot of changes in my life. So, uh, really excited to have him on the call. We've been working together for a while now. And, uh, every week we have a deep discussion, deep dive discussion on literally what's going on in my body down to my genes. Like he's literally, we've, we've reviewed my genes at least three times, right, buddy? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> three different companies and looked at, at all the subtleties of how my genes are designed for me to build more muscle, change uh, certain qualities about myself and so forth. And um, some of you comment guys really quick. Have you got some of you noticed that uh, I have been looking a little different, like getting leaner, getting healthier, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead and put a comment in. Yep. There they are. Yeah. So that has a lot to do with, uh, uh yep and that's uh has a lot to do with mark's help and uh mark's been helping with me every week to take care of that stuff and the thing that he did that that uh other people wouldn't explain to me clearly is how to literally get my testosterone higher uh get my and without having to take trt and so if you guys don't want to take trt you don't want to take chemicals you don't want to take drugs and you want to get your testosterone jacked up this is the guy to talk to so welcome to the call mark Thanks, Brian. It's great to be here, man. Yeah, it's about that game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Being androgens and, you know, one of the things that testosterone does, and I learned this from Professor Huberman, neuroscientist at Stanford, is that it makes effort feel good. And that's what it's about, man. When effort feels good, you put in the work. Yeah. That's a, I'm glad you said that because that's something we always talk about here at Fearless. I'm just moving a couple of things around. We talk about how, um, we, you know, you grow through the application of tension, just like building muscles and to get really good with social tension, emotional tension, step yep. in and, uh, and not to, not to overdo it, just like not to overlift weights and not to underdo it, find that sweet spot for you. And, uh, you really believe in that, don't you? That whole idea that the body adapts and grows through that proper amount of uh, tension and, and, uh, and, and on, on all levels, really. Because uh, we talk a lot about even, you know, chemically, there's a lot going on and so forth. So, yeah, Trojan horses, that's the thing that are in most people's body in their bloodstream, but it's also in their cell. Scientists call this extracellular junk. So that kind of, you know, gums up hormonal pathways, energy pathways, detox pathways, but you can easily get that crap out of your body. It doesn't cost you a dime. It just costs you time. Yeah. So you're talking, when you're talking about getting that crap out of your body, are you, you're talking about like, um, bromine, chloride, estrogenics, things like that. Yeah, that, that certainly helps, but autophagy. Autophagy. Oh, getting the, yeah, junk, yeah. the junk DNA. The, the junk, junk proteins, amyloid, you know, amyloid plaques, you know, tell, uh, toxic peptides, shit like that. Like if you do it properly for a, a long enough period of time, skin tags fall off and lose skin and, you know, this, this just basically cleans you out. So, so when you're talking about that, because we've talked about this before, these, these, this junk DNA or junk proteins, they build up. Yep. Every, I don't know if you guys know this out there in the audience, but they build up in the human body and they enter, what do they interfere with? What do they cause? Like if somebody out there was saying, do I have a buildup of junk DNA? It's possibly, possibly crashing my testosterone, making it hard to function. What would, the, what would be a sign of that? Well, how do you feel? How do you wake up? You know? When I was speaking, one of my friends, Dr. Ken Berry, and he learned the truth, you know, I think it was probably six, seven years ago now. And when I interviewed him last on my podcast, he said at 51, he's never felt better, even comparing that to 25. Yeah. So this natural decline that we experience is, is a lot to do with our hormones and our energy. 
You see, what a lot of people don't understand is that if you don't increase the demand for testosterone every single day, the machinery that makes testosterone scale down. So this is this natural decline. And then you add on top of that, these junk proteins, these estrogen-like chemicals, all this crap that's in our body. We just have this drop in performance and you know what we say? That's just natural decline in age. And that's just a load of BS. I don't know. I can't see how many doctors have said that to me. Oh, it's just your aging. And uh, yeah, no, I don't accept that, man. And for you guys out there that don't know, some of you know, I'm 52 now. And yes, my body is in better shape than when I was in my 20s, as far as like uh, the way it looks, the way it feels. I've always had inflammation problems, but they're at their lowest right now and getting lower all the time. And I'm yeah. running into more and more guys like you and me that get, you're close to 50, right? I'm 50 in July. Oh, congratulations. Happy, happy almost birthday. And <laughs> I'm running into more guys like me, you, Sean Baker, that are getting ripped abs, muscles jacked at, at 50, and they're not using TRT. They're yeah. not using replacement hormones. They're actually getting authentically healthy and healthier than when they were 25. Absolutely, Talk man. Like I was on TRT for over 10 years. So back in 2018, when I learned the truth from Dr. Ken, I started to come off it. It was a bit of a bumpy ride because I didn't have my now mentor, Dr. Anthony J, who did his PhD in hormones and cholesterol. He's also a genetic expert and works at the Mayo Clinic. So that's my coach. So, you know, it's, it's helped me completely change how my body works, especially hormonally. Now, you had told me once that your body is predisposed. For all you guys out there that have weight problems, your body's predisposed to being heavy set, right? Genetically. Like you should have, you should be a heavy guy. That's what yeah. Told you. yeah, 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 yeah. I've got, um, when Dr. J went over my genetics, you've got this gene inside you, everyone has three copies of it. It's called the FTO, fat transfer obesity gene. Now mine is terrible. It's the worst ones that you can have. And that's what Dr. Anthony said. So I should be fat and overweight, but um, I'm not. And it's because I followed their lead. I followed their guidelines and, you know, I effortlessly stay at around about 12 to 11% body fat year round. Don't count calories. I don't weigh my food. You know, people shouldn't have to do this and I'm nearly 50. Yeah. So you don't count calories. You don't weigh food. You stay super lean. Um, uh, what's your name again? Yeah. His name is Mark Iron. <laughs> I R O N. He asked if you're on Facebook. If, uh, yeah, I am. I'm on Facebook. It's uh, I don't really drive that page too hard anymore. I have it for a few years. It's called Mark Iron Motivation, but I'm going to power it up again you know, pretty shortly. We'll give you at the, end of, at the end of today's call, guys. We'll give you all his yeah. information um, and get you get you going. Now, uh, for you guys out there right now that are listening to what he's saying, how many of you would love to have like how many of you have a low sex drive? How many of you would love to have more testosterone? Who wants to build more muscle? Who wants to get leaner? That's overweight. Who wants to understand their genes better? Um, so pop that into the chat. And uh, which which one would you guys most want to learn learn about today? Okay, Roku's on here all the time. Uh, he wants to ask about muscle building muscle. So um, for somebody that's having trouble building muscle, I, you know, the first thing I think of always is testosterone. Is that the first thing we would think of? Or because a lot of people are like, I'm going to the gym all the time. And then I go check my testosterone and let's say it's maybe it's not even bad. Maybe it's 400, you know, on a scale of what, all the way up to a thousand. Is that correct? 1200. 1200. So what would you want to do with somebody like that to get him building muscle? Well, as, as my mentor, Dr. Jay said, if it's 500 and below, big problem, better fix it. He did a talk for the special forces and he said, and I'll never forget it, those guys at that level, they're not mucking around. So I call the green zone 500 to 800 and the blue zone 800 and above. Nice. So you want to get to your, um, it's, it's not so much about that, that level, it's about your free testosterone. Your free testosterone is what does the magic in your cells to put on the muscle. But there's things, a lot of people go to the gym and they just go through the motions, right? They do all this volume and they train sometimes five or six times a week to follow the pros. Now, I can't do that. I can't follow the pros. They're genetically gifted. I'm not. And they're more than likely on you know what anyway. So for me, it's about doing more, doing less work, but with more intensity. 
So when you, when you can learn how to do that, you're milking that session for everything that it's got and you're doing less work. So at the end of the day, you've, you've, you've created a hormonal profile that is more advantageous for increasing testosterone. So there's so many things that you can do throughout the day with your mind, your body, your physiology and lifting weights at the gym to increase testosterone instead of what most people increase, cortisol which tears you down, your muscle, your resolve to win in life and a whole bunch of things that um, really just, you know, it's destructive to you, you putting on the muscle. So this, this is fascinating what you said, because it reminds me of, um, I was lifting, I lift with the X3 bar as a lot of guys know, because uh, well, A, J, gyms were closed, but B, it's just easy to take with me, which is, and I'm, I'm growing on that. That's nice. But you coached me into, I was lifting six days a week. You cut me down to three days a week with some hit training. And I actually started growing faster. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, this is more. Yeah. And that, that speaks to what you were talking about, that if I was on TRT, that might be different. But well, you can see being on TRT is like a Band-Aid. It can disrupt a whole bunch of other hormones. That's one of the main reasons I want to get off it. And you can also develop hormonal resistances. You can be testosterone resistant too. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard yeah. this. So instead of being, you know, you're more like you, when you're testosterone resistant, you're insulin resistant, you're leptin resistant, your adiponectin's kind of out to lunch as well. So it's like being a carpet snake. It's in, in your body, but it doesn't really have much venom, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So what you want to do is gain hormonal sensitivity. So every drop of that free testosterone is doing what it's supposed to do. You've got more receptors and you've got more enzymes in the pathway of, of creating more muscle. And, you know, that's what it comes down to. And you've got to gain that hormonal sensitivity. And so you were saying uh, earlier in the call that then you could have high testosterone, but not be able to utilize it, to utilize it. And that's what you're basically saying now. Is yeah, that yeah. Well, that's basically where I was on TRT. I had to use more and more to get the same effect because what it does, there's a part of your brain, this might get a bit geeky. It's called the pituitary. Now the pituitary has got a pulse generator that releases glycoprotein hormones, the precursors to sex hormones. But when you're on TRT, it shuts that whole system largely down and the machinery downstairs start to scale down. So you're disrupting your entire endocrine system. In a healthy person, luteinizing hormone, which is the precursor to testosterone, was released in what scientists call a pulse generator every hour in a healthy, in a healthy body with no Trojan horses. And for about four hours at a specific time of the day, the bulk of a dude's testosterone is created. What is that time of the day? Deep restorative sleep. So if you're not getting that deep restorative sleep, you're going to wake up flat and tired in the morning. Yeah, and that was, a, that was one of the problems I was having. I wasn't getting enough deep sleep um, but due to the tension in my body and stuff like that. Um, So when I'm listening to you talk, that if people who, and I want to kind of dumb this down for my audience a little bit, just in case when people are not that you guys are dumb, you guys are awesome. But, uh, when people are, um, taking a lot of testosterone artificially, they can actually decrease their sex drive, decrease their testosterone ability to absorb the testosterone, which then says they've got all this testosterone in their system, but they're done. It's not necessarily being utilized. They're not getting the result from it. Um, yeah, yeah. is that correct? And then Absolutely. what happens is this, is this where the old saying that like bodybuilders, uh, sh you know, shrivel up downstairs, they get the smaller penis. And yeah. All that kind of stuff. yeah. Yeah. The machinery downstairs atrophies. It's yeah. called um, hypogonadism. Yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed since we've been doing stuff to increase my testosterone naturally, my morning erections have been almost painful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Like I recently helped another gentleman with it. And he said for the first, he was on TRT. And he said for the first time in a long time, I've got morning wood. Yeah. He's, he hasn't, he didn't have that on TRT. Yeah. And I, I had it without, T, well, I had it, uh, I was on TRT for a very short period of time way back when I noticed absolutely nothing. Yeah. I noticed no difference from in injecting it to, to not being, so I just threw it away. 
Um, but I definitely noticed a difference with what we were doing. And that's when, yeah, my erections got really hard and I got way hornier. It was like, <laughs> you know, um, I was like, oh shit, I'm ready to go meet some girls again. Let's, let's go, let's go out yeah, there. Yeah. Let's have fun. Yeah. Like a 20 year old again. So um, that was great. Yeah. Now, as people are asking, you know, because all this stuff that we're talking about here, there's some people are saying, you know, because one of the things you love to say, and I love how you say this, it's like, you want to be able to wake up in the morning ready to, uh, what is it, what do you say, slay the day or kill the day or take on the day? When you wake up in the morning, when your feet hit the ground in the morning, yeah, you want to attack the day with that vigor, that courage. Yeah. And, you know, when you've got energy, so energy is the holy grail, right? So you've got to open up your energy pathways because energy creates hormones. Energy powers up detox pathways. Energy powers longevity pathway. Energy is going to give you the drive, the motive, the motivation and the ambition to go at life. And every time you wake up like that, you're getting a little bit stronger. But the, um, the tragedy is that people just get it. They accept this low level, you know, energy in life. And when you get it back, especially when the androgens are up high, you know, it's just, you operate in a whole new level. It's just like, you have, it's the thrill of the hunt. You quickly stop worrying about what other people think and you get on your mission. You join a group of like-minded men and you just want to attack it. So I love what you just said there because you got, and I imagine there's a lot that goes into, pl into getting to the point where you have high energy in the morning and actually you want to attack the whole day. So there's not just testosterone. There's probably several, if, if not many different little, like one percent's in play. We love to say one percent's in play that make that happen. Is that correct? Absolutely. I like to think of the hormones as a, a band playing, right? Mm -hmm. So this natural decline that we are supposed to expect in life, which is BS, some of the band members leave and some of them play out of tune. And that's how our energy feels. We just feel like a mess. We want to bang our head up against the wall. But when you get the band members playing again, yeah, it's a whole new level. Nice, nice. And so, uh, so I got a bunch of questions coming in over here. We're going to get to them uh, on the chat. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to ask if you could do a quick overview, if somebody really wanted to learn to get that energy to go attack the day, what would be an overview of the most important things they should have in order? Like you just you talked about androgen, you talked about testosterone, you talked about what would be the things like for me, one of the big ones when I started reading your book was I realized I had a, a histamine response to egg whites. I cut out the egg whites within a few days. That was a big difference. Yeah. Also, one of the things that was, was since I've worked with you and I don't even know exactly what caused it, but it's a lot of the changes we made to my diet supplements. Uh, I stopped getting brain fog days. I still have tired days, but I don't get yeah. brain fog days anymore. My mind stays pretty clear. That's for been freaking awesome. So what if somebody wants to get to the point where they uh, want to attack the day? Um, what are the most important little parts that they need to get in extra order? Well, as you said, food sensitivities are a big issue. Like when I, my DNA, I can't have anything that's artificial. I've got really poor genetics there. So even artificial sweetener from a candy, can of Pepsi Max can take me out, but it takes four or five hours until I feel its effects. And the older you are, the worse it gets. And this is how you just think to yourself, oh, it's just me. I've just got bad genetics. Well, it is true, but it's only because of these artificial chemicals that are coming into your body. I think of them as Trojan horses and that's exactly what they are. So these Trojan horses will disrupt your hormones. They'll cause inflammation. Inflammation just drops dopamine. So you're not motivated, it drops testosterone. And when inflammation is high, cortisol goes up. So it's this vicious cycle of low energy and we just get used to it. So the first thing you've got to do is get your energy back because it feeds these hormonal pathways. It feeds the antioxidant pathways. So the easiest way to do that is to fuel these energy pathways 24 seven. Now what fuels these pathways? Nutrition fuels these pathways. So if you're lacking magnesium, you're not gonna have a lot of energy. So what a lot of people don't understand about ATP, which is the currency of the cell, which is energy, is that it's, you create your ATP, but it's only potential energy. So there it is sitting there. It can either be stored as fat or you can use it as fuel. So how do you use it? How do you use that ATP? Well, just like a match, magnesium comes along, binds to the ATP, lights it up, and there's your energy. So if you're lacking magnesium, you're not going to have a lot of energy and you're not going to make a lot of testosterone or other hormones, thyroid hormone. 
So you've got to make sure that you've got plenty of these, what I call workers in your blood to make sure these energy pathways are functioning 24 seven. Yeah. So magnesium is just one example, right? There's, there's yeah. Magnesium. Just one example. Cause for me, uh, I had a bunch of histamine responses going on. I had the magnesium problem. I'm sure my estrogenics were too high. We worked on, uh, I did a lot of stuff to clean out, uh, estrogenics out of my body. Yeah. Uh, there was a bunch of other stuff too. And I just felt like, um, there's so many one, like, I think in your book, you list like five different one percenters, how many, like five different really important key things to get that, to get that horm, those hormones working good again. So you can start attacking the day. Yeah. Well, just think about like this, you've got to have these workers in your blood to keep these pathways turning. But then if you've got Trojan horses, like coming in from these chemicals, it's going to take you out. This chemical called phthalates, it's everywhere. It causes testicular dysgenesis mm -hmm. and this has been known for quite some time the european union banned a lot of this stuff in the 2004 dysgenesis. can you explain that briefly just so everybody sorry knows. you said testicular dys dysgenesis what does that mean yeah well it sounds as bad as it is you start to scale down atrophy shrink. Okay. yeah shrink so your, your balls small are shrinking. men yeah okay we'll say your, also, so your balls are shrinking Okay. Yeah, and you become infertile. So you get all these chemicals causing all this disruption. But um, what people don't understand is that it's in toothpaste. It's in personal care products. If you've got the wrong, if you've got a nonstick cook, your fry pan, it's in that. If you put your, if you get your a roast, like you're cooking a roast and put it in an oven bag, it's yeah. full of that shit. And it comes into you. And it's just swimming around causing disruption and testicular dysgenesis. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, I don't know. We haven't, we never talked about testicular dysgenesis, but sounds like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, I, I do, I do believe that I did have a lot of chemicals in the body. So I do believe like yeah. stuff like, uh, bromide, bromide being the big one, right? Is I think bromide yeah. is the worst. And then there's, uh, chlorine bromide and there's that whole, whole host of chemicals and mercury, for example, and these, and today it's almost a given plastics, you know, which has yeah. the estrogen in it. It's almost given that all this stuff's going to get stuck in our tissues. And, yeah. um, and then we see guys age and at 50 years old, what happens at 50 years old, they're like, Oh, this is just normal aging, you know? Yeah. And, but if you go to a primitive tribe out in the middle of nowhere, that's not exposed to any of this shit, there can be guys 80 years old with a thousand testosterone. Yeah, like, exactly. with lock hard hard ons you know yeah and, um and so they were saying so it's not just normal aging and that's the part that i want the guys on the call to understand is yeah. this is what you talk about is why this is happening to us today versus this guy that's out and maybe a tribe in the maasai or or some other tribe and he's he's killing it yeah yeah well that's the, that's exactly the point isn't it yeah. So we're, we're exposed to all these chemicals and there's 84,000 of them on the planet. And uh, it's, it's just not these chemicals. Like if you, thousand? Uh, Jesus, yeah, 84,000. Wow. Well, he, here's just another example of Australia, the U S versus the European union in personal care products in Australia and the U S we've banned 11 of these chemicals in the European union, 1300. Jesus. Yeah. They know about it. So you guys see that. Profits to be made because these chemicals, they preserve the shelf life of foods and also personal care products. Yeah. Like, so, so literally we banned 11 and they've banned 1300 in the European union guys. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. Think about how, like the, the difference. That's why they say people will go to like France and suddenly they can eat bread. They come back here. They can't <laughs> eat bread. Right. Cause well, let's take bread for example and bread alone uh, was in the 80s, they, they took the uh, uh, iodine out of bread and, and switched it to bromine. They took out a natural mm. human element and put in a, a toxin. Exactly. And I yeah. almost wonder if they do this on purpose, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what uh, Dr. Ken Berry said in my podcast. He said, there's a subset of people that know exactly what Dr. Ken and I were talking about on that podcast. And they're happy with men to have low testosterone because they tend to roll over and take it. They're apathetic. They don't have motivation and drive. And then they can sell with drugs. That. Look how many drugs you can sell when that happens too. You know, uh, when everybody, when their testosterone crashes, everything else starts to crash right behind it, like a domino effect. Yeah. Well, you feel apathetic. You don't feel like a man anymore. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a terrible place to you know exist. It really is.
Yeah, it is. Um, mm. You have no drive. I mean, what for the guys on the call that don't that maybe you don't even know much about testosterone. When your testosterone is low, what are some of the symptoms? You just don't have the drive, the ambition. You feel apathetic. You put things off. You know, you, you, your brain will start telling you bullshit stories about how you can do it tomorrow. Or one of my personal favorites, which happened to me, when my life gets easier, I'll put in the time. I'll be able to put in the effort then. But it, your life doesn't get easier. You either get stronger or life beats you down. Yeah, I love what people are loving this, by the way, just so you know. So uh, tired, uh, let my room get messy. I'm, I'm 23 and I already resonate, feeling sluggish. Everybody's, everybody's relating to what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I've always I've always liked the Euro sandwich bread better than American sandwich bread. So, uh, <laughs> so stuff like this. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's talk uh, about um, energy really quick. So testosterone is one of the keys. Getting the estrogenics down is one of the keys. If you were to give somebody on the call one or two quick tips to let's say they want to start, they, they want to feel better about this. They want to attack their day. What's one or two things they could do that would probably give them the biggest bang for their buck to start getting their energy up, getting their motivation. Cause a lot of guys tune into me are tuning into me because they want to go meet girls, but they don't have the drive. They don't have the sex drive. They don't have the, 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 the energy anymore. And so they're like, ah, oh, you know, I need, I should, I should get on Tinder tonight and get a date, or I should go out and meet a girl tonight, or I should go out but you know what? It's easier to watch TV. So yeah. what's some stuff we can do to get their energy up and get them moving? Got to clean up your nutrition straight up. Okay. You got to clean up your nutrition and you got to select for what I call A grade androgenic foods. Like there's a lot of C grade and F grade foods out there that you eat makes us feel good temporarily, but it causes inflammation. And when it causes inflammation, you, your body will not make androgens. So you wake up the next day feeling the same and the next day feeling the same. So the first thing you've got to do is fix your nutrition. So what would it for now? I know that there's a, you have a basic idea most likely, right? Everybody does. What would be a really good A grade food? So I'd love to hear what some of those are, but I also know that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, everybody's a little different too, based on their genetics. Right. So yeah. For example, me and some of my food intolerances, you know, egg whites aren't necessarily horrible. They're not great, but I can't eat them at all. Um, and they make me immediately sluggish, right? So, yeah. so can you talk a little bit about what are A-grades androgenic foods that are going to help to get them out of bed in the morning? And yeah, well, you've, you've got estrogenic foods that um, increase estrogen. You've got androgenic foods that increase androgens that pave that you know, hormonal profile for you. So, so the so meats, for, with, again, I want to go meats. back really quick. I want to go back to the layman, somebody who has no understanding of science for yeah. you guys out there. If you've got a lot of estrogenics, uh, if they don't understand that, that's, that's more of the female hormone, right? Yeah. So it's going to cause you to be what? Yeah. It's going to cause you to put on weight, you know, estrogen is one of its main functions is to put on weight for the baby. So when a woman gets pregnant, the estrogen goes up and up and up and up. So you get fatter and fatter and more apathetic and you just want to, you know, clearly stay at home and look after the growing baby inside. So that's what um, estrogen does. But the biggest problem that a lot of people face is that all plastics, basically all plastics out there are estrogen like. So they act like estrogen in your body. Yeah, and they say so if you use if you, if you use uh, plastic containers and you you microwave them, holy damn, you're getting a big load of estrogen, the female hormone in that. I used to do this too. I had no clue, but um, when you start taking these Trojan horses out of your life, you start getting more energy, more motivation, and you start coming back online, and that feels amazing. And because you know that what you're doing is working and you can feel it, it's not something you're thinking about. You actually feel it. You want to do it because you've got the energy and you know that it's working. Yeah, I primarily drink out of glass bottles now. I don't drink out of plastic, yeah. but then there's so much food wrapped in plastic, right? And they yeah. say, uh, I saw a show online where they were showing how the average human eats about a credit card size of plastic every year and they don't even know it just through the particles, the things they take in all year long. Yeah. That's all estrogenic. That's exactly right. And uh, when you've, see, when you've got these artificial estrogens in you, it actually inhibits the pituitary from releasing the precursor to testosterone luteinizing hormone. 
right? Okay. So these chemicals are inside you and your body cannot, will not release luteinizing hormone to make testosterone in the first place until these chemicals are cleared out. Yeah. They're not acting like estrogen. Yeah, that's why I was doing a lot of work to get the estrogenics out. Um, yeah. Which actually my last, uh, that last blood test we did, which we went over my blood test, my estrogen yeah. levels were right spot on. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, that's probably why I'm getting those rock hard hard ons in the morning. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then so uh, androgen. Now the next piece is androgen. You were saying we got to get the androgen up. Can you explain to them what an androgen is? So they, they understand. Well, androgens are just in the pathway of the sex hormones. You know, what? I guess a lot of people don't understand that cholesterol is the precursor to all steroid hormones, estrogen, all of them. So it starts with cholesterol, then it goes into the mitochondria downstairs and it turns into pregnenolone, then it comes out into the ER and turns into progesterone, then it turns into DHEA, then dihydrotestosterone and testosterone and all those players. So that's the androgen pathway. Now, the biggest problem that a lot of people face is that they'll eat some highly inflammatory food, okay? And they've created some testosterone, but because this inflammation is, is inside them, what the science is now showing is that testosterone goes through an enzyme, it's worked, it's magic on, and comes out as estrogen because estrogen helps protect your heart and arteries from oxidative stress and inflammation, Ah, so the body is favoring going towards the estrogen because we're inflamed because we're eating yep. crap and saying, well, let's not worry about the testosterone right now. We need to protect your heart. Yep. And so uh, interesting. Yeah. Testosterone is a good man. He takes a hit for the team and turns himself into estradiol, the female hormone. But yeah. uh, and cortisol will do that too. If cortisol is too high. So if you're sitting in traffic and you're thinking shitty thoughts about how my life sucks, you're inflamed and you make, you're turning your testosterone into estrogen. Yeah. So th this is really interesting because then you can see the guys who have a lot of feminized e energy and you can see like they'll have a, they'll start to I get small tits. They'll start yeah. to get small. Uh, they'll get a little belly with some small tits. And we, what do we call them? We, they need a man's ear, but these are basically uh, bitch tits. And, uh, and you know, um, yeah. gynomastia. Is that what it's gynomastia, called? Yeah. 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 Gynomastia gynecomastia and uh, I don't know if anybody on the call has got that but is that uh, for anybody that does hopefully it's reversible uh, without, uh, so it is, I, it is yeah okay awesome um, so so then we so the androgen receptors have to go up you were saying and as they go up then testosterone goes up energy goes up you start to get become more alive right or I'll energy. give you an example there's this chemical called PFLA it's highly estrogenic and it actually destroys androgen receptors and it can stay in your body for decades and uh have you eaten pizza out of a pizza box before yes right so these can these companies are allowed to put pfoas in this in the pizza box because it protects it from heat grease and water but um these chemicals are attracted to the fat we eat the pizza goes into our body and this is a nasty one, again, testicular dysgenesis. It's cytotoxic, it's mitotoxic, so it destroys your mitochondria, where mitochondria is where you make your hormones, the, the very starting position of your hormones. Nice. So, so what you're saying is as we get all these chemicals out, the, the androgen receptors naturally start going up again. Like exactly, we're designed to. yes. We're designed yeah. to have high testosterone. And... Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And, and I love your point earlier. I kept, I keep thinking back to it. It's like, yeah, we're, we can get up to a thousand or 1200 testosterone, which is great. But when you look at somebody like, let's take Sean Baker, who's a carnivore guy, right? His yep. testosterone wasn't super high when he had it tested, but he's built like a beast. And, yeah, it, was. Uh, and it, it wasn't super low. It was probably in the middle. So, uh, and I, is that, would you say that's probably due to the fact that he has a lot of free testosterone? Is that, was that correct? Well, it's only one data point too. You know, you need a few data points to find out exactly where you are. Uh -huh. But um, you can be more potent. Like somebody, I spoke to Dr. Amy B. Keelan about this. She's a world-respected authority in sexual performance and longevity. And she said someone that's at 600 can feel like they're at seven or 800. So you want to gain hormonal sensitivity. And the only way to do that is to eat an androgenic, you know, based diet. 
Okay. And these chemicals, so if you've got oxidative stress in your body, you've got too much inflammation, you've got these chemicals, they actually go onto the cell surface and, and rip off these androgen receptors. So your androgens are there trying to get in, but there's no door. So I guess the analogy is you're at an international airport and there's only two gates open. You've got a whole bunch of people trying to get in. No one can get in to do work. So this thing, this big boat comes along called sex hormone binding globulin and it gobbles them up and destroys your testosterone. Mm -hmm. Basically, the longer it's in your blood, the worse off you are. So you end up with a bunch of bound testosterone to this to this boat, and it's unusable at that point, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's interesting too, um, and that sucks. And there's a lot of people have this stuff going on. So it's not just the number, guys. Think about this for a minute. It's not just the the, the amount of testosterone you have. It's not just the food you eat. It's not just exercise. It you know if the exercise is on point, but you're inflamed all the time, that's no good. If you're if you're eating the wrong foods or you're eating mostly the right foods, but you're, you've got too much estrogenics or chemicals in your body, that can be a problem. So there's this whole slew of like uh, dominoes that can, that can cause one thing to go out and another thing to go out. And as you nail, as we always talk about the 1% rule, you nail 1% and 1% and 1%, it all starts to come together. Things start clicking uh, and then things start healing. And um, uh, like there's so much more we haven't talked about but I want to open it up a little bit to some of the people. Uh, there is one more thing that I think is very important for people's health out there. And I just want to cover it because I think it's probably, in my opinion, one of the most important things for helping these people get over some inflammation and health issues, which would be something you love to talk about, which we haven't talked about, which is the omega-3, omega-6 balance in the human body, the ratio of the two. What are, what are we at? We're like, uh, currently the, the population's, uh, 20 times to 40 times the amount of omega-6 they should have in their body yep. and and they should actually it should be a one to one one to two ratio and they're like one to 20 one to 40 and then, and then they're wondering around why they're wondering why they feel like shit and they're inflamed can you talk yep. about that a little bit yeah so science now shows that if you're 10 to 1 and above it's a big problem and uh, the higher you are, the worse it becomes. So when you've got a high omega-6 to 3 ratio, it, ca it causes chronic low-grade inflammation. So if you think about that one thing alone, there's no way in hell your body's going to create high levels of androgens if that's the case. But it gets worse because if you've got a high omega-6 to 3 ratio, you've got chronic cortisol raised, and that inhibits your androgens from being created as well. And the higher your omega-6 to 3 ratio, you see is your cells, you've got like, I think, 70 trillion of them, they have properties. And these amazing scientists have found that when your omega-6 to 3 ratio goes up, but also saturated fat in the cell, the cell slows down. It works much slower. And an NIH research has said that, oh, you know, when that's the case, you can't too damn slow. Right. You can't react until so you, I think, so I don't know if we lost you or me minutes. for a minute with We, we lost a little bit of the feet. So you, we were saying NIH research says, and then we didn't hear anything from there. Yeah. And I, NIH research at Burton Linton, he said that, you know, if your omega 63 ratio is too high, you can't be a fighter pilot. You're just too damn slow. Your reaction time is really slow. But then again, genetics play into it. I'm blessed with genetics in this category yeah. because I don't need a lot of omega three to saturate my cells to get it back to that one-to-one -one ratio yeah. so that's one of the biggest steps that uh, you can make and it, it happens quite fast because every single day you got to think about it like this right every single day your body's replacing and creating 40 to 60 billion cells so quite literally what is in your blood are the building materials to all of those new cells now if you eat a shit diet you're going to have shit results because your cells are going to slow down they're going to be inflamed they're going to produce more cortisol than you want produced so you're at a massive disadvantage so why handicap yourself with a high omega-63 ratio yeah and this is something we worked on i did a blood test to see where, where my ratio was i was in the yellow but i had already been working on this for several months and i was in the yeah. yellow so i knew i was in the red a few months earlier <laughs> yeah. coming down to the green you know and uh i, I need to get it tested again yeah. uh we do we've done me and uh, i've done with mark several blood tests and, and he's always looking at my numbers and we're and i'm watching this stuff slowly come back in the range mm -hmm. which then 
Uh, I go through bouts of like my body's inflammation is getting down, more healing phases. I'm slowly starting to build more muscle. And the beautiful thing that Mark pointed out to me on several genetics tests was I am designed to be athletic, but because of all the histamine responses, the food toxins, the tol- I wasn't I wasn't getting the benefits of that gene. Yeah. My my genes were were I was not able to build muscle because I was basically too toxic. Yeah. And uh, that's all changing now. And he's been helping me with that. And in the past, I'd work out, work out. I get tired, work out. And so it's getting better and better. Um, um, now, here's a simple question. So this is, why I, this is why I want to dumb it down a little bit, because a lot of people on here, they don't study this stuff for a living, you know, and so they're a little lost. So somebody said, should I take more omega-3 or more omega-6? <laughs> I take omega-3 at the moment. And well, yeah. you've see. got another problem with omega-6, like, it comes with damaged fats. So they're incorporated into your cells too. And the, the science now shows that that can cause cellulite, that can cause sore joints, you know, it can cause um, <clears throat> fibrosis, which isn't good for anything. So these damaged fats are a big problem. So where are these damaged fats lurking? Anything that comes in a jar, a box, anything like that is packed full of omega-6. So the first thing I tell my clients to do is go to your pantry and get rid of all these jars and boxes that are just destructive. They push up your omega-6 to 3 ratio and they are full of damaged fats. None of that is helpful. And you're never going to have, you're never going to achieve high androgens if that's the case, if you continue to eat like that. But here's another big problem. They're highly, these foods that these companies make are highly addictive in two ways. So milk, wheat, and soy, which are everywhere in the modern world, are packed full of what, the, what scientists call um, opioid peptides. So the, the same opioid peptides, which trigger, you know, from morphine. So they, they make you feel like, oh, this feels really good. I'm eating this food, but you have this big crash and you want to go back to it. So they design and they select for foods that are highly addictive and they put the right amount of sugar, fat and salt to trigger dopamine release in your brain to make it more addictive again. So we we keep going back to this when we feel like shit and it makes us feel worse. And then our omega-6 to 3 ratio goes up. And then again, remember that every single day, 40 to 60 billion cells, they're being replaced with this junk, right? So what can we expect? Well, all we can expect is poor energy, poor focus, brain fog, more inflammation, lower androgens. So it's just like putting in dirty gas and dirty oil in your car every day and expecting the engine to keep running good at 100,000 miles. It's gonna, it's gonna be running like shit after a while because it doesn't have the building blocks to uh, maintain the motor. Yeah. And I, I love this question. I, I wanna, I, one guy, see, they, I, I, they're starting to get it. That uh, one guy wrote, I eat, I eat peanut butter all day, all day, all the time too. Another guy wrote, just how dangerous is eating McDonald's, so. <laughs> i don't think we have to even speak about that really do we i mean it's 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 you can have you can get a burger of mcdonald's out and leave it out for days and days and days and nothing happens to it it's full of preservatives and these preservatives are toxic i don't even know how it's legal it should be criminal it's criminal in my opinion i want want to point out to you guys look does mark look healthy give me an answer how healthy does mark look now i want you to take into account uh, he's, he's 50 in July. How many of you guys, uh, uh, are under 50, under 40, under 30, and don't feel as healthier as masculine as he does. He looks right now. So what he's talking about takes time. Okay. And somebody wrote Mick trash for McDonald's. <laughs> uh, somebody wrote, you look like you're 30. Um, and, uh, I'm 52 and I do a lot of this stuff now. They, they say I've de-aged in my, in my twenties. I looked older than I do now in a lot of ways. Um, this stuff can be all turned around. That's the beautiful part. It's not permanent. It can all, but it does take time. It takes consistency over time. So I have one more quick question for you. Then we're going to jump to the audience. Okay. Uh, and I've got this question a few times in the chat and everybody's like saying, saying you look amazing and then, and so forth. Thank but, you. uh, um, didn't I see him on Monday Night Raw last night? There you go. Uh, um, the uh, what does an androgenic diet look like? A lot of meat. Yeah. 
So what, what you do is I call it the one ingredient method. So if there's not, if you've got something that's in a box or a jar, that's not one ingredient. It's packed full of chemicals. It's packed full of preservatives. It's not going to do you any good. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh man, this is strict. It's not strict. You can eventually get to a place in six, maybe three months, depending on how much metabolic damage you've got to let loose on the weekends. You can still have a bit of this junk, but because you've got high androgens and your cells are clean, your blood's clean, you can have a bit of this stuff and still be okay. Yeah. So it's not something that's ridiculously strict. It's uh, you got to have fun in life. You got to let loose. And that's a big part of it too. But you want to get all the blood work in balance before you do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The first thing you want to do is get your blood work done to, to find out where you are, especially with the omega-6 to 3 ratio, and then find out where your kidney's at, your liver's at, and find out where the damage is, has accrued, and then start fixing it. Yeah. And for you guys out there that think eating a lot of meat sounds bad because, oh, I've heard meat's bad for you. I eat beef pretty much every day. I eat steak, and I have for a little about two years now. And where was my cholesterol the last time I got it tested? He said he wants it higher. <laughs> he's like, you know, you need higher cholesterol. And I'm like, I have perfect cholesterol according to the doctors. <laughs> and he's like, no, we're going to raise that. And, yeah. uh, and I eat steak almost every day. I have, uh, as far as my heart goes, the last time I had my heart checked, the doctor was like, your heart's amazing. Um, and so these P so the biggest problem I see with a vegan or a vegetarian diet is that the, the massive amount of seed oils they usually eat and which leads to the high omega six. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, um, so you're not, you're not, you're not stuck on this idea that it has to be carnivore. It could be ketogenic. It could be, there's, you know, different versions. Uh, you've got to have a, a substantial amount of protein because um, all of the, the enzymes or just, fat, right? or just protein. Sorry? Protein and fat, right? Yeah, protein and fat. So there's many studies out there that have shown this now, but you got to think about this. You got your androgen pathway, right? You got a pathway here. Mm. Now, to make a boatload of testosterone, you've got these things called enzymes in that pathway. And they're made from what? Amino acids, proteins. Now, if your body doesn't have enough protein to make more enzymes to put in that pathway to create more testosterone, do you think your body's going to make a lot of testosterone? It doesn't have enough enzymes to do that work. Yeah, that's why so we it comes back to thyroid it. support too. Your thyroid is the, the hormone that puts more enzymes in the pathway to create more androgens. Yeah, and this is why I would say we often associate meat with very masculine men. And yeah. Very strong men, healthy men, you know, uh, most yeah. of the time. Um uh, I love steak. Heard so many people say red meat is death. Andrew wrote. Okay. I can speak to that with authority. My sister doesn't um, listen to anything that I say at all. Five years ago, she follows the standard diet, you know, low fat, low protein and lots of carbs, right? She um, was very lucky. She had a, a polyp that was carcinogenic. So she had that removed from her bowels. Now, every year she's had to go back and they've removed these polyps that could be cancerous. And she's had 20 removed. 20. So she said to me before Christmas, you eat a lot of red meat, you know, you better get checked because I nearly died. So I took her up on that. And the specialist said, you've got clean pipes. <laughs> So not, not one cancerous polyp, yeah. Perfect, yeah. So, And I ate a lot of red meat. I ate a lot of meat. But the reason I can is because I engage all these systems to clean out these junk proteins. Yeah. I don't have my endocrine. Dis I don't have these chemicals inside me causing this destruction. My sister does. She doesn't listen to me. My base diet is red meat. That's that'll always, no matter as I get more ketogenic, because I'll spread out, it always, I, the basis is always red meat for me. And I found I've only gotten healthier. And so, so Daniel wrote, uh, and then I'm going to jump to the Q and a guys over here. Daniel wrote, um, so all my feedback is good, except cholesterol is high. And this is a question I hear all the time. I'm hearing this is good. He's asking. Cholesterol. Yeah. That's a conversation that needs to be changed. If you want to go check out my podcast with Dr. Ken Berry, he can speak to that with authority. He's a board certified MD. Cholesterol needs to be higher than where it is today. 
And there's, there's a massive big study, 22,000 people over about 12 years that shows that now. So this cholesterol conversation needs to be changed. I agree. So, yeah. I hear the same thing from everybody. And all these super healthy people are saying the same exact thing. The healthiest and the fat out of shape ones are the ones telling you, get your cholesterol yeah. down. Well, uh, also, they, my, my mentor, Dr. J, did his PhD on cholesterol and hormones. And the butter zone coming from Dr. J is between 220 and 250. Yeah. LDL. That's, yeah. That's where mine sits too. The last time I got a check to was 228. And all my other bloods are perfect. My liver, my kidneys, my blood count, everything is perfect. My yeah. pipes are clean. I'm in perfect health. Yeah, and it feels like it. Uh, Lewis wrote, uh, why do bodybuilders, and this is a really interesting question, that ha and, th and I think you've got the answer to this, but why do bodybuilders that have been on, on meat, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, now switching to the plant-based diet, he claims that his heart was nearly destroyed from eating meat. So why do people like Arnold think their heart's destroyed from eating red meat? I don't know. I can't speak to what he's talking about. I can only speak to what I've experienced. Uh, I think um, I know that testosterone supplementation can destroy your heart and your arteries. It's very corrosive. And that's why testosterone goes to estrogen to protect your heart and your arteries. And those guys don't want a lot of estrogen. So they do everything they can to prevent estrogen from climbing. So maybe that's playing into it. But again, I'm not going to speak to it because I don't know Arnold personally. So, yeah. Yeah. so speculation would be possibly they were mixing a lot of red meat with fat uh, with uh, carbs, high fat foods with carbs. That could be one. Seed oils would yeah. be another. Injecting yeah. uh, um, uh, testo uh, not just testosterone, but um, steroids could be another. Well, that's it. That's what I'm speaking to. Yeah. You don't yeah. know what people have taken. So, yeah. Yeah, and I've heard that uh, that eating high fatty steaks with high carb is uh, high sugary stuff is is one of the dangerous things that people do. Yeah, well, it causes the formation of this toxic metabolite called advanced glycation end products (AGEs), mm -hmm. and that drives into you know heart disease. It drives into asthma. It drives into endocrine disorders. It drives into inflammation. It actually shortens your telomeres which is advanced aging. So yeah. when glucose is in your blood too long, it turns into, it forms these advanced glycation end products. And yeah. what it does is it, it destroys receptors. So it can destroy your receptors on your LDL cholesterol and cholesterol gets smashed into your arteries and it gets a bad name. So all these things are going on inside your body that we've got no clue about but it's not until you get your inflammation check, like C-reactive protein and your thyroid and all these other blood markers checked that you actually get a full picture of what's going on inside your body. And yeah. then when you've got that full picture, you've got metrics, you've got data points to change your food and push your food in the right direction for you specifically. Now, for me, I've got really bad genetics when it comes to carbs, but I still eat carbs. I eat carbs every day. I just don't eat them the way the government recommends them. So Dr. J was on a call with me, went over my genetics. And when my blood glucose is 90 and above, I've got a four times higher risk for arthritis. And I've had five shoulder surgeries in the past before I learned all this. And before I implemented these strategies, I lift my arm up to get something high on the shelf. And it was just like oh, really painful. Six months after this, you know, arthritis is completely gone because these AGEs that form weren't destroying the tissue in my shoulders anymore. Yeah, and I was having joint problems too in the past. And, you yeah. know, that all just goes away magically. Suddenly your arthritis yeah. is gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, so the, uh, so guys, examples of this that he's talking about, you get a, a burger with a bunch of ketchup and uh, relish or uh, a chocolate shake or Coca-Cola to go with your burger and the bread and the, the, the refined carbs in the bread. And you mix that with the fatty burger and, and boom, you there, there, then people are going, Oh, red meat's bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like what a lot of people don't also know, and I was shocked to learn this myself that we know that magnesium, I spoke about this at the beginning binds the ATP and psh, like a match lights yeah. that energy up so you've got energy, but it's also required for testosterone to be created magnesium. 
Now, every single sugar molecule in your body requires 54 magnesium molecules to metabolize that sugar. Right, so you're wasting your magnesium because you want sweet things. Yeah, I know that sweet things are nice, but um, what do you want? High performance, high androgens, muscles, lean body, energy, ambition, and drive. What do you want? What well, for you guys out there that are working on meeting women? Do you want a stronger? Like, think about how much helpful it'll be for you to get go out and meet women, approach women, talk to women, be turned on for women. If you got a high testosterone, a high sex drive, and how much more they're going to feel you. We always talk about turn on on this channel and owning your turn on. But if you don't have the ability to turn on your turn on, there's a problem. <laughs> Let's so, talk about pheromones, man. Yeah, pheromones. pheromones you don't smell them, but they're there. They're airborne hormones. Now, pheromones, I learned this from Professor Sapolsky. He's a legend. This man is a world-respected authority. And he says that we, we release these pheromones. Now, if we are stressed out, we release stress pheromones. They, they did a study on this too. So if you're in front of somebody and you're stressed out, even though you're trying to hide it, the stress pheromones go to that person's nose and it's routed straight to their amygdala, the fear center of the body, of the brain. And you get this offline, right? So if you're in front of a girl and you're, you're stressed out and you're, you're, oh, shit, I hope she likes me. Guess what she's getting? A bad That's taste right. from you, right? Yeah. An off vibe. Now, this is what's exciting. Sapolsky also said that men with naturally high testosterone, women are more attracted to. The reason is simple. Evolution. You've got more swimmers. You're huh. strong. You're that man that's going to protect her. That's what she's smelling. That's what she's attracted to when you first go there. And you couple that with, you know, you being the strongest version of yourself. What do you think is possible? Yep. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what we always talk about guys. So yeah. um, he, uh, by the way, Andrew just posted a, a link in the chat box for you guys that were interested in checking out some of Mark Ryan's stuff. It's in there right now. Uh, Cause I saw that question come through a few times. So uh, feel free to click on that link. We'll post it again a little later. And, and uh, but I want to jump into the questions. We've got a lot of questions here uh, and I've been asking some questions from the chat. So I'm going to move over to the Q and a box and ask the questions from there. Now, guys, we've got some uh, questions too, Brian, when you got a sec. Okay. Uh, how many guys are on YouTube right now? Yeah. 80, 80. So we got 56, 50, take out 52 here. Eight, we're over a hundred today. Good, good, good call, man. Uh, Landon, we got to ask Landon's question, then we'll switch back and forth. So we're going to ask Landon's question because uh, Landon is an awesome guy that helped us out with some stuff. I love Landon. So uh, I'm going to an allergist for testing tomorrow. Do I also need to have my DNA tested separately? If so, what value will this provide? I just basically do the DNA testing because that's going to tell you what you, you're sensitive to. But if that's the first place I would start, and if you can't get your androgens up high from there, then you can really do specific food allergy testing from that point on. But also what a lot of people, I guess, don't understand is that, you know, you, I spoke about these workers that you need in your body to keep all the pathways going. But here's the problem. Dr. Anthony, my mentor said that some of these micro minerals are double edge swords. Too much or too little will lower testosterone. So you've got to be very careful about supplementing vitamins and minerals that you, you just don't get a cheap version or one that's got way too much of these micro minerals in it because they're going to take you out. So there's so many little nuanced things that we've got to do to make sure that we, we've got the best possibility to keep climbing the androgens up over six to eight weeks. And that, that's why I keep getting blood tests with you occasionally. And then we go over them again and yeah. we see where things are at. And we start to f figure out how my body responds to things. You get a really interesting picture after six months, a year of doing this. You do. Yeah. Data points are everything. What you don't know, you can't fix. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, uh, okay. G give me one from YouTube, Andrew. Hey, cool. A couple of guys have asked about um, that favorite topic. So many guys, semen retention and testosterone. So have you ever studied semen retention where guys separate their ejaculation from, from, uh, or just semen retention in general, where they don't ejaculate at all. There's the two, there's just the one idea where they do the, uh, tantric kind of stuff where they, they separate ejaculation from orgasm. They don't ejaculate anymore, but they run the energy through their body. And then the other one is just, Hey, I'm not going to masturbate, watch porn. I'm going to keep my semen. When does that do anything for you? 
can't speak to it with authority. I don't know much about that, but I do know that the more sex you have, the more testosterone you make. And so that's, that's good. And those studies are probably done with guys ejaculating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah most likely. So there you go, guys. Yeah, but it's, it's um, not so much masturbating. It's actually being with that woman. Yeah. Because all the all the extra hormones probably come out when you're masturbating. You probably don't have the uh, cuddle drugs like oxy oxy. Exactly. You know, it's it's a hormonal dance, and yeah. sex is the best way to bring it up. Yeah, you do think think about that. How many extra hormones? What's the one that men get? Women get the oxytocin, and men get what? Vasopressin. Vasopressin. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, Emmanuel. Uh, has to testosterone well you go to your doctor get a blood pl blood test but the big problem that uh, everyone faces is that you've got 250 to 1200 and as my mentor said 500 blow big problem better fix it but if you're 250 350 400 500 they're going to say you're fine but yeah. they can't help you beyond that yeah and then you're also saying that like for me when i got my testosterone tested i tested i tested last time i tested i tested four things i think estrogen testosterone DHT and so forth, yeah. which is a topic we want to come back to. We got to talk about the DHT thing, um, but I'll, I'll take a few more questions. We'll come back to that. Actually, let's ask it now because I think it's that important. These guys on here are going to love this. How many of you guys would love to develop more uh, masculine features, more uh, like, for example, uh, you ever noticed that when a guy is really has a lot of estrogen and estrogens, he doesn't have as many masculine features, wider jaw, that type of stuff. Um, uh, then uh, Mark talks about that. There's specific types of testosterone that you were talking about that really help to bring out these masculine features. And I'm just starting on this protocol because I've always had a baby face, right? Uh, I think when I was younger, I had a lot of estrogen. So now I've got the testosterone up. Now I'm getting this other type of testosterone up to bring, uh, to change and bring out more of these masculine features. Can you talk about that a little bit? What, what, what that does and how it works or what anything, that type of stuff? Yeah, dihydrotestosterone. But you've got to be very careful because if you've got a pathology, it's not going to be helpful for you. You could have prostate cancer developing. So that's going to feed into it. But again, this goes back to the omega-6 to 3 ratio. When you've got a higher omega-6 to 3 ratio, you're much more likely to develop prostate cancer because one of the metabolites of omega-6, arachidonic acid, is a potent cancer fuel. So if this is inside your cells, you've got more potential for cancer. But uh, to speak to dihydrotestosterone, that's the one that's going to give you the voice. That's the one that's going to give you the wide jaw and the facial hair. So the, you've got testosterone and dihydro. And inside there, you've got an enzyme, a protein enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. So you've wanna, you want to power that one up. Now, there's things that naturally inhibit 5-alpha reductase. And lots of antioxidants do, right? We're told to have these antioxidants, but if you're healthy and you've got all your vitamins and minerals in you, you don't really need antioxidants. Now, turmeric will inhibit that 5-alpha reductase. So your testosterone is bottlenecked and it can't go to dihydro. So if you think about that over the course of six months, so you're, you're doing what you think is right, but um, you want to get your male characteristics up, it's not going to happen. And you're saying don't do this protocol and as if your omega-6s are too high is what you're saying too. Yeah, well, well Dangerous. if you've got a pathology, your blood work, you've got to know your blood work. If you're serious about this and you want, you want to move in the right direction, you must know your blood work. Awesome. Because you yeah. could have an underlying pathology there that needs to be fixed before you can get there, but you can certainly fix it. I had high blood pressure. I had asthma. I had allergies. And, you know, I had arthritis. They all had to be fixed before I had any hope in hell of getting the androgens up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, let, let's, uh, let's take another question, Andrew. What do you got? Um, okay, we got a question about uh, testosterone and hair loss. Do you lose your hair due to increased testosterone? And is there a way to keep your hair and increase your testosterone? You're talking to two bald guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, there certainly is, but dihydro is the one that's going to take that out. Now, there's lots of new research out there that shows you how to stop that from happening. I'll give you an example. that This is going to get a bit geeky, but I don't know how else to explain it. So you've got three pathways that feed into um, your, your hair follicles, right? So you've got one pathway that creates DNA bases, like folinic acid. Then you've got another pathway that methylates and helps DNA expression. So the other pathway helps with detox and energy. So when you've got all these pathways running, 
consistently, you're going to have enough folinic acid to create the DNA basis to stimulate the, the hair follicles to keep growing. So you, you could certainly do something against dihydrotestosterone, you know, sending you bald. But here's the thing. I started to go bald at 17. And by 21, I was pretty much out to lunch. But um, I prefer to be bald. Hair's kind of overrated for me. Kind of grow it down there instead. Yeah, I, I, that's a question I, I never really thought to ask and I don't put much thought into is uh, a little bit here and there. At our age, having not had hair for so many years, now learning all this stuff, what's the odds you could actually regrow it uh, with, with nutrition? Is it even possible? Um, or is it something that you could maybe grow a little bit extra, but you probably couldn't get it all back, you know? Um, so I was just wondering about that. Do you have any information on that? I do. Uh, I haven't got it with me now, but you can, there's lots of things you can do to stop that premature hair loss. Yeah, mine's it, it all comes down to keeping all these pathways of these metabolic pathways open and working 24 yeah. seven. See, I, my DNA, when it comes to creating uh, folinic acid for the hair follicles, I've got a very slow gene to do that. And that's one of the biggest reasons I went bald personally. And my son, he's had his DNA tested. He's the opposite. His works very fast. And that's why he didn't go bald. He's 28 now this year and hasn't gone bald, but he's got exactly the same hair loss probability as me. But this folinic acid, which I didn't create much of, took my hair out. Yeah, I, uh, this is an interesting comment, uh, talk because uh, both sides of my family, I mean, I shouldn't be bald based on both sides of my family, my mom's side, my dad's side, everybody's me, my, my grandpa's, they all had hair. Yeah. And uh, I think I primarily lost mine due to gut damage, toxins. I had inflammation on my head. It used to itch all the time. And then when all that went away, it stopped. So I think I would still have hair today if I didn't have all those problems. So. I believe I would too. Yeah. yeah. If I knew what I knew back then before yeah. I started to go bald, because my genetics, once it happens, it's happened. That's yeah. just like, well, that's why you lose it, but you can prevent it from happening by doing lots of different things. But if I, I think that maybe if I had known that way back then, yeah, I could have, well, at least mm -hmm. gone to 40. Yeah. Maybe. You got to keep those <laughs> pathways shut off, you know, not, not let them turn yeah. on or those genetics shut off. That's really good. Uh, Rob. Okay. What is, this is from Rob. What is the title of the book? Uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about your book at the end of the call. We got about 20 minutes left or so. So do you want to mention that now or do you want me to, okay, we'll just get it at the end. Is that good for you? What do you want to do? Yeah, it's just, it's the androgenic method. I've got a PDF version, 140 pages, and I've also got one on Amazon too. But okay. the, the one, the PDF version is, is the one, you, you know, that's the one you want to go for. What's the name of it again? One more time. The androgenic method. Okay. And that's the new book that just came out versus the yeah. one I was reading. Okay. I read the more complex one, I think, yeah. which, uh, which, you know, is a lot, a lot of data to take in. I had to like, Whoa, yeah. whoa. you can tell how much data he's got. Um, anonymous attendee. What are the top two things I can do today to naturally increase my T levels? Because there are two things that would uh, Use work. The one ingredient method. If it's in a box or a jar, just discard it for now. And that's just that's about eating everything that's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, look, organic. Yeah, right, whatever. But it's full of chemicals that cause testicular dysgenesis, that switch off energy pathways. It's cytotoxic. It's myotoxic. It's endotoxic. So it's slowly destroying the machinery that make testosterone. Yeah. So what you want to do is where you can select for organic foods, organic beef. All these things are going to push you in that direction. But a lot of people think, well, I can't afford it. But, you know, if you've got energy and, you, you know, you feel alive, you can, that's the position where you can start to create wealth. Tony Robbins, you know, people like Gary V. there's no better time, no better age than to do this now. I would say on that note that it, energy has been the one thing that's made me successful. I've always had energy problems my whole life. That's why I found you beat tired then i started existing on rock stars and energy drinks and that got me up there but then i'd crash and i'd pay the price later and then it was caffeine from coffee and i you know and 
at a certain point, you begin to realize you can only go so long doing this stuff. And the sooner you get to what he's talking about, you get down to that idea that I'm going to stick to minimal ingredients, nothing from a jar or a box. I'm going to get all the seed oils out of my diet. You're going to see a pretty big fucking change in your life, guys. So, um, so just let that happen. Let that idea. In. Hey, uh, Andrew, what do you got? We have a question about... Um... <clears throat> says what if you're a buddhist and you don't want to eat meat for those types of reasons philosophical or religious how can you have a because we were talking earlier about uh, how important meat is yeah other ways around that then you'd want to use whey proteins yeah can yeah. you eat dairy yeah simple as that oh, you know uh dairy it's got over 60 hormones in it it's got ages it's got damaged fats so I limit the amount of dairy that I am exposed to. What about a uh, raw dairy? You ever tested any organic raw is not too bad. Yeah. But I certainly wouldn't use it as a staple. Yeah. Okay. Full of hormones. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, whey protein is there. And, and I know a lot of whey proteins have chemicals in them too, don't they? So you got to be careful about yeah, the type so of you want, you want to buy one that's you know, got a great, uh, you know, it's organic to start with, but it's a reputable company. Yeah. It's just it's such a toxic world we live in today. It's, it's, it's tragic. Like they, they found these chemicals in polar bears for Christ's sake, polar bears. Yeah. And it's been happening since the 1920s. So it's our oceans are polluted. So that's how it gets into the polar bears. Yeah. Boulevard. I see plant protein. Is that the best? No, but Boulevard, we were just saying whey protein, the best protein is, is, is something like a steak. You know, something that's, you know, clean meat, it's, it's grass fed, but you know, you can go from there as far as I'm concerned. Do you agree with that, Mark? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't um, have any whey proteins or anything like that. I just eat meat. Okay, cool. Do you have a diet in your book? Do you, do you have the energy? Yeah, I've got a sample that? plan in there. So you, you'll see exactly what I eat over the course of a day. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Jim, uh, who's also on here a lot. Hey, hey Jim. Uh, uh, supplement use, uh, boron. Absolutely. Yeah, I take boron. You, you told me to take it. So, and I, I, the boron, I saw a big difference from it. It happens pretty fast, too. Yeah, my, like all these, you know, if you're lacking something, you know, the band's not playing the best that it can as soon as you lack something. Okay, awesome. That's perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. And if you're not lacking it, you don't notice much. So, that's yeah. the other thing I've noticed. Um, yeah, I did. So that was the next question. You got a diet book. Just get his book has a diet and all these principles in it. You guys can check it out. Go to the uh, Mark Iron. Uh, it's it's a, it'll actually go to the link that we posted in the chat. And Andrew, you're posting that in the chat for the YouTube guys. Is that correct? Yeah, doing that. Okay, I'm going to ask one more here. Ed, Edward, it seems like meditation and workouts would be some high yielding behaviors to help reduce cortisol. Yeah, that's an, that's an interesting conversation. So you want to be very strategic with meditation because it powers up the serotonergic system. So that powers down dopamine and testosterone. So you want to do your meditation towards the end of the day where it's very beneficial because it's going to calm you down. It's going to cool off cortisol and the stress hormones so you can go into deep restorative sleep. But when you wake up in the morning, you want to be dopaminergic. You want to be, you know, revving that engine as hard as you can, because that's a big opportunity to create more androgens and also demand more testosterone so the machinery stay healthy. So when you do that, it's like going to the, when you go to the gym to lift the weights, you're exercising the muscles. But when you demand more testosterone through different things like your body language, the way you breathe, many different things, you're working out the machinery that make testosterone. So over time, you're not going to experience this natural decline as we're told to damn will expect. You're keeping the machinery downstairs healthy. Mm, I like how you said that because that's, that's very interesting. Because a lot of people do, and even I talk about that, starting off with a, um, a meditation or releasing in the morning. And uh, But I actually, when you think about it, in the morning, I don't do a sitting meditation in my room. I actually go outside and I, I, I start, yeah, I have a process where I walk around and start connecting and feeling tension in the environment and feel, okay. So maybe I unconsciously did that. I don't know. So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's get a couple more. Are you burning out there? You do it. You good for now, Mark? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, man. Yeah. Okay, so let's get a little bit more in. Um, Andrew, you got one more for me over there? Did we lose you, Andrew? I can go on to another question here if you need me to. I think we lost Andrews until he... No, I'm it. sorry. I uh, tried to unmute, but I didn't. Um, all the guys started talking amongst themselves, and they're not asking questions. So for now, we're good. Okay. So Fred, uh, do supplements like D, aspartic, as, aspartic acid, and uh, tribulus, teres, tris, I don't know how to say these words, help yeah. the body to optimize testosterone synthesis? So here's the thing, right? What you want to do is get there naturally first, and then you can experiment with those things. They're not needed. Fancy supplements are not needed. You can get there naturally and start producing high optimal levels, and then you can tinker with these things. But honestly, you shouldn't need to. You should be able to get yours up to your natural ability. So it's kind of like you want to figure out what your natural baseline is. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. these supplements, they do work, but they're not going to work when you've got Trojan horses in your body. You're yeah. wasting your money, completely wasting your money. So until you've got these Trojan horses out and you've cleaned out the junk proteins in your cells and your extracellular fluid, it's going to be very difficult for these supplements to elicit any kind of effect on you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And for you guys that just tuned in by junk proteins, he means all the, I uh, mean, by the Trojan horses, junk proteins, toxins, estrogenics, uh, high omega-6s, things like this, all these things that, that make the body not function well, that cause inflammation. That's what we were talking about earlier. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of that. So, yeah. um, okay. Uh, <laughs> Matt wants to know uh, what you eat for breakfast. <laughs> well, my breakfast begins at two o'clock. And I eat steak and a little bit of vegetable yeah, and good fats. And so you're big on intermittent fasting. I know that because you, you've got me doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was doing it before, but you really tuned me in to the right way to do it, which is really nice too. Yeah. And it has a powerful effect on the body. Um, the, the problem that a lot of people face is they'll use this one meal a day diet and they'll fast, you know, way too long. But that you know, heavily impacts your body's ability to create high optimal androgens. So through empirical testing in myself and my clients, for me, between one and two is a sweet spot. Is okay. a sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. And we and we and we have different days where I, I intermittent fast at different times based on that's right. When you want to rip off the body fat, we use what I call the hormonal wave. So we're ripping off a lot of body fat, but we're also strategically increasing protein synthesis to put on the muscle. Yeah. And with that, that I have seen more muscle go on. I, I was pretty, you know, there was a period of time I had, a, I, I was pretty skinny fat, even though I'd gotten to where I was looking big, a lot of it was an illusion because I had a lot of chubs, uh, chubby on me. And as all that fat came off, I started to say, okay, you need some muscle, Brian, <laughs> especially when my gap, my mom, especially when my, my uh, stomach was at its worst and I was damaged. I was just, I shrunk up to like a toothpick way back when. Some of you can find those old videos if you look. You see the fat ones, you can see the skinny ones. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, hey, Landon. Uh, so we got Landon. One more from Landon. My HDL cholesterol is seventy-eight. Do I need to get this up? If so, how? Um, yeah. Well, you've got to get a full blood panel to have a look at the full picture. Like your thyroid could be tapped out. Lots of see if your thyroid's tapped out, your HDL, your LDL is going to be a bit different. See, what thyroid hormone will do is it'll put more receptors on your liver to take out LDL out of circulation faster. So if you, your thyroid's not great, you're going to have, you know, your, your LDL is going to be higher and it's going to be all over the place. So it's, it's really, you've got to think about all these hormones as a symphony and yeah. to get them all back in the game. We need hormonal sensitivity. We've got to get rid of these Trojan horses. And the easiest way to do that is start selecting for foods that just are one ingredient. Get, yeah. get away from boxes, fast food and all that crap and just start selecting for one ingredient, and that's what you put on your plate yep. and with an emphasis on protein. Um, keeping it simple. Um, uh, this is an interesting question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little selective now, guys, because we've got, uh, I, I don't want to keep them here too long. We can get them back for another talk. What we can do is if we have another talk, we'll pick a, a specific subject maybe to go deeper in instead of a whole overview yeah. and uh if he's open if mark's open to that yeah no problem um, man. happy and happy um 
Awesome. Uh, so this guy writes anonymous, but he writes, I'm five, four male, slightly smaller than mom and dad, 20 years old. Any idea why that happened? Any advice? I haven't grown for like seven years. It's kind of an interesting question. Yeah. Well, you basically you're not going to grow taller now. I mean, that opportunity has gone, but there's, there's certainly things that uh, the scientists are discovering now that can, you know, if you had known this back then you would have grown taller. So Growth hormone has a lot to do with it, but um, there's other hormones and different pathways that need to be activated. But it all comes down to nutrition, right? So if you, these chemicals, one of the first hormones they take out is thyroid. Now, thyroid is super important for growth, both yeah. you know, growing taller and yeah. brain growth and a whole bunch of other different organ systems. I think that happened to me because I, they thought I was going to be super tall. I was growing like a weed. They thought I was going to be like my uncle. I was built like him a little bit. And uh, then I just stopped and I hit five, eight and didn't grow anymore for a long time. And I also had thyroid problems because of the iodine pro issues. And yeah. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that was all related, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, the body's not going to invest its resources to growing tall. if there's another underlying issue basically. Yeah it's more critical to staying alive is yeah. probably it's going to put yeah. they put it into that first. Yeah. Um, okay. What, uh, what's your question? What's your input on uh, skin conditions like fungi infections uh, and what not in relation to diet and what, huh? What is your uh, conditions like fun uh, infections? What it, what not in relation to diet? Okay. He's basically asking about these fungal infections in the skin what causes them? What's the optimal form of eating to heal the skin conditions? I think you already got that. Um, but just do you have any input on skin conditions and what causes them? Yeah, well, you know, inflammation plays into it. Damaged fats play into it. You know, these damaged fats cause collagen breakdown and, you know, they, they cause skin irritations. So when your, your body's releasing fat, these little Trojan horses will come along and they'll irritate yeah. the skin. If you've got like, for me, I know that I'm very sensitive to art of, uh, anything that's artificial. My skin will flare out if, if I do that. So. Yeah. And would you agree with me when, cause from everything I've been researching, you know, I'm not a big fan of killing bacteria in the body anymore. Like people, like somebody asked me to, to do an antibacterial hand soaps before I go in stores and I'm like, nah. And they're like, then they say, we well, can't come in our store. And I said, I won't go in the <laughs> store. Because I actually believe we, you know, our body's built on bacteria and if you kill the bacteria, we're dead. So um, I don't want to put this stuff in, in my hands. And well, think about it like this. It's antibacterial. What are your skin cells made of? What produces the energy in your skin cells? Mitochondria. What are mito mitochondria? Bacteria. So you're killing the energy in your skin. You're, kill yeah. you're killing machines that make the energy to keep your skin healthy. Why would you do that? Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous to me. If you've got really healthy, um, like you said, you got all the Trojan horses worked out, you got a healthy gut, healthy body, your body's not going to take on these back, bad bacteria. It's, no, it's going to have an get, army of good bacteria well, that'll say, you're not coming in. Yeah, I, I'll just give you an example of this. Andrew Huberman, professor of neuroscience at Stanford, super smart dude. There was a study done with two groups of people and they injected both groups with E. coli, right? So you're going to feel like garbage. You're going to throw up and have the runs and feel like absolute crap. One group meditated using mindful meditation. The other group did fire breathing. You know, we've spoken about this. Now, the group that meditated had all the symptoms. The group that did the fire breathing, they were asymptomatic. They hardly felt a thing. And the yeah. reason for that, Huberman says, is that it increases killer T cells. And these killer T cells, like little Pac-Man, come along and took out most of that E. coli. But it also raises dopamine, DHEA, and testosterone. Makes sense, yeah. And and I, when I think of meditation, see, for this is this is my weird thing. I don't think meditation always has to be still. The meditation can be like in in Kundalini Yoga, they do these really powerful breaths of fire that you're talking about, where they. <laughs> And they do, yep. and they call all that meditation. It's all meditation to them, you know. And it's like it's just it's a meditation that either expands or contracts, right? It relaxes or. And uh, the question is, are you mindful while you're doing it? You know, yeah. running could be a meditation if you go into a flow state. Um, yeah. So this is this is what I love about modern work is I think we 
It's like it's like being nice. We think being nice is being always making doing what everybody else wants, but being nice could be saying no to somebody. Being nice could be setting a boundary with somebody. Being real, yeah. being honest. Yeah, and that requires yeah. tension. Yeah. 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 So awesome. Um, I don't want to. Uh, you know, we're about an hour and a half. I said we would just say it about an hour and a half, and this has been a great uh, conversation. Like that long, man. I love talking about this. <laughs> You guys, uh, you guys enjoying this out there? Put in some comments. So let me see, let me hear how you guys are doing. Um, uh, awesome. Okay, they're starting to come in. They always take a minute to start typing. So yeah. educational, loved it. Fucking amazing. Great stuff. Exactly. Would you guys like Mark to come back and we can pick some particular topics that Mark can talk about, and um, in the future? And if you do, what would those topics be? Was there any particular area in here you'd like to go a little deeper into that you'd like to discuss? Uh, yeah, they're just coming like a hey, very good choice topic. Hell yeah, come back. Yes, this is great. Uh, raising tea is probably, yeah, raising tea, yes, yes. So raising tea is probably the biggest one. Curing illness with diet. Um, getting ripped past 40 and how to work out. That's one of his specialties. Um, Randall, hey Randall, he's one of my clients too. Uh, one of live workshop clients getting ripped uh, past 40 and how to work out. Uh, okay. I thought you wrote that. Just wrote it twice to, to make sure we heard them. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and clear. Okay, guys, we, we're getting the idea. Uh, becoming more manly looking. Yeah, that one's an, that's an interesting one to me too. Uh, I'd like to hear about energy and motivation. Okay. So guys, it was great having Mark here. For you guys out on YouTube, uh, send Mark some love on YouTube. And so if he has a chance, maybe he'll get on YouTube and check out some of your comments and, uh, yeah, we'll and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you got any questions for him on YouTube, he can check it out and maybe get get back to you there. Um, yeah, so with that said, uh, do you want to plug, plug, uh, you've got a, uh, you got a book, an ebook. We got a link in the chat for the ebook, yep. uh, thefearlessman.com slash Mark Iron. Is there anything you want to say about it? Yeah, it's it's three steps. And I don't hold back. I give you everything you need. So it's all in there. It isn't too geeky, but it's kind of in there. So if so a lot of people want to know how this all works. So I've got that information in there. Phase one, I think it starts at about page 70. And it goes through you know all the problems that we've got to solve and how to solve those problems importantly. I give you a sample of my nutrition, but I also, I also speak to the red meat issue, right? Between my sister and me. So yeah, everything's covered in there. I'll show you how to remove the Trojan horses, the extracellular junk and crap like that. So yeah, it's all in there. I want to help people. He does. And he does. He's got a massive passion to constantly help. That's why I've worked with him. That's why I wanted him on the channel uh, because he cares, man. And you guys know that we're all about providing the deeper value here at fearless rather than some superficial trick that's going to, you know, be like, here, take some TRT, boom, you're done. You know, we don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to get guys on here that really want to change. Self-contained unit, man. Make your own for as long as you can. Why would you want to pay for something that's just a band aid? Yeah. One of my goals, and you know, we can talk about this is, uh, is I want to be one of the youngest 80 year olds on the planet. Cause I didn't have a, you know, I felt like an old man when I was young. So now I want to feel fucking young when I'm old and uh and so that's kind of the goal and that's why i've been working with you moving in that direction and i want to continue that uh, over the years as i move in that direction and uh that might be some of the topics that we start to cover more and more on this channel is how to stay oh, yeah, young and healthy how so much we can do i mean seriously yeah. holy shit I, one of my coaches who you haven't met mark is uh you haven't met any of my coaches actually he works for uh fearless works with fearless is uh say works with fearless is Sam. I don't think Sam's on the call. I should get him right. on here. He's uh he's about to turn 65. He also looks super young. People think he's like 40. He's bald. He's got a beard. Uh, <laughs> and he's about to hike the John Muir Trail, which is like 250, 260 miles for his 65th birthday. He's going to say nonstop yeah. hike, just yeah. hike and camp, hike and camp. And yep. he is, he's the, he's so young at heart and so full of life, this guy. Yeah. And I need to introduce him to you because his whole thing is, is he does every year he gets younger. You know, yeah, same I mean, attitude. And that's what that, it's has, about. that has a lot to do with the mindset, you know, that oh, yeah. Yeah, you train yeah, the yeah. mindset here, you train the you know, big time internal and chemicals and all that stuff. And we do. So it's a, uh, and so you're really in alignment with what we believe. So I really appreciate having you here. One more Absolutely. time, guys. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Do you want to say anything in the closing? Yeah, that's it, man. You know, like life is short. 
and you know don't put it off do it now this moment is everything you know when you make a decision to move forward you damn will make that decision and go at it give it a you know yeah. the six weeks and just take it on you know follow the steps and get it done there you go and uh, the link again is in the chat for you guys on YouTube. There'll be a link there. There'll probably, I'm sure, well, there will be a link in the video and chat too. So you can check that out. Uh, keep an eye out for Mark's comments. Go uh, check out, you have a YouTube channel too, right? Mark Iron. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I haven't posted on probably, I don't know, five months, but I've got a, that's oh, 12 videos lined up to start posting every single week from about, I think I'm going to start next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, there was some good information on there, but if you, but you got to be patient because he does describe all the data and you got to, and if you don't know the data, it's going to take a bit. <laughs> if you don't know all the pathways, you're going to, you're going to be a little confused at first, but, but as it all starts to come in a line, you, you'll, you'll get it. So yeah, if you're hungry for it, you want it, you'll stick around, you know, you'll be there, you'll show up. And if you, if you're that person, you're going to get the results. That's right. Any reason I can say that with confidence is because I've got well-respected authorities behind me, giving me the steps. So it's not me. I'm just a bridge between their genius and you becoming the strongest version of yourself. There you go. So uh, thank you, Mark. I appreciate having you on the call. Yeah, it's and, been a uh, love, love talking yeah. about this. And we'll yeah. definitely do it again soon. And Absolutely. with that said, uh, remember guys, only the confident really live and we'll see you in the next video. Okay. Beautiful. Take care, buddy.